All right, uh, welcome to this class. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all those that have joined through. Uh, this is Sam of Eva Anda, and um, we are here for financial accounting revision. Just try to do some sharing here so that we are on the same page. So I, like I indicated, uh, today is actually an opening class. So I have some new people that are joining in. And uh, those that are joining in, I hope you, uh, you're preparing uh, maybe for October or December, you'll confirm with me. Uh, you can maybe use the chat box just to confirm a little on uh, what exactly, uh, uh, which, which papers are you preparing for? Are you preparing for October or for December? Okay. So you could just use the chat box just to share with me what uh, exactly are you, which sitting? Is it October or is it um, December? Okay. So Joanita says October. Okay. Yeah, October. We really, we really hope for the very best, especially in October. We hope that uh, everything shall really be fine for us to have an exam to run, okay? Okay, so I have October, 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 and then I have December. Okay. All right, um, whatever, what, whatever, whatever, whatever you're planning for, basically, uh, that is that is something that uh, it's the same thing, basically. I should say, even those that are preparing by the way for December, December is also not very far. Uh, we already this is seventh of um, seventh of seventh of September, so you have very small time to really get to. The next journey okay yeah you have a very small small time to get the next journey all right um so we kick start our our class now to those that are joining us for the very very first time we usually hold this class every tuesday from seven to nine okay it's basically a revision class and as you can see my screen this class is basically uh, revision and answer, okay? It's basically a question and answer, question and answer, okay? And then, uh, so I usually come up with the questions and sometimes uh, I also get questions from you, okay? Yeah, but uh, right now, I've not gotten any question as of yet. So I'll try to use some of the past paper questions, okay? Now, before I get into, um, before I get into this, uh, our today's class revision, uh, one of the things that I want to uh, inform you, I know uh, some of us, okay? Some of us are joining in um, this paper for the very, are joining in CPA for the very first time. Maybe this is your first paper, okay? And uh, you still have a lot of anxiety in wondering how these papers are actually set, okay? So, as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, that is how your paper will look like, okay? Of course, it will have October 2021. In, in case you're doing the paper in December, definitely you have uh, December 2021, okay? Financial accounting paper. Um, the instructions have not changed. I know we are moving, uh, we hope to move to a new syllabus, but I think ISPA will be launching that next year. Okay, so with that in mind, just know that our guidelines for financial accounting remain the same, okay? We have, of course, this, this exam runs for three hours and 15 minutes, okay? It runs for three hours and 15 minutes. And I want to say that all the CPA papers, apart from one paper, which one paper is, um, that is a paper for integration of knowledge. That is a paper that runs for, for, for more than three hours, okay? Of course, for it, it has two, two sessions. You enter in the morning and then you again enter in the afternoon, okay? 
But for these other papers, basically yours is to take it that they take three hours and 15 minutes, okay? Now, the first 15 minutes, okay? The first 15 minutes, of course, of the exam are designated for reading as, you, as it is indicated there. Now, for a financial accounting paper, the first 15 minutes, basically what you're going to do is to read through, but also make a choice on the questions that you're going to do, okay? Basically, you're going to read through and make a choice. Every time you look through a question, you make a choice on towards uh, which question you'll be doing, okay? And then, of course, uh, they are indicating here critically that, um, of course, the examination contains two sections, it contains section A and section B, okay? Uh, section A is uh, bound separate from section B. Now, you don't move out with the paper of section A, okay? So uh, this paper comes, uh, comes and then you, you, answer, you answer it right on the same question paper. So you don't move out with quest, uh, section A. And that is why you see it's, it's uh, those that have looked at past paper questions, most of these papers don't have sec the section A component because that's the paper they don't move out with, okay? Yeah, they don't move out. But if you need uh, uh, some of these uh, objectives, when you look at uh, papers from, um, I think from around 20, 2010, going downwards, if you can access the ISPA website, there are several object, uh, there are several papers that you can find with objectives, okay? But also that shouldn't really worry you. In case you have a good understanding of accounting, okay? If, in case you have a good understanding of accounting, then you can be able to attempt any objective because they will just bring you, for example, they will bring you, uh, let's say maybe ABC bought, uh, let's say a motor vehicle of let's say 20 million shillings. And then this vehicle is going to last for five years and its scrap value is let's say maybe uh, 1 million, okay? And then they are going to go on ahead to ask you things like maybe calculate its depreciation. And then they will give you answer A, answer B, answer C, answer B. So after the calculation, you should be able to, to circle the right answer, okay? But you can find these, uh, these uh, objectives available. I think some of you that are on part of our normal classes, you've seen some objectives that have been shared to the WhatsApp group. So those can be your starting point, okay? Yeah. And you can find, you know, financial accounting is not, um, is a paper that cuts across not only uh, CPA, but you also find it uh, as part of it on SCCA. So even when you just Google and say financial accounting objectives, you'll find a lot of results, okay? If you just Google and say financial accounting objectives, PDF, you'll be able to find several of these. And those are just for, for your learning, okay? They're just for your uh, basically for your learning. So I just want to I just want to 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 share something small here. What I'm basically saying. So some people usually say, "How can I get how can I get objectives since they are not on the ISPA website?" And I'm like, "Please find them online." Okay. You see, it's the same thing. It's the same thing when it comes to uh, to even let's say. Our, 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 our own study, you, you basically don't have to depend only on what you find on the ISPA website. Look for, look for different, uh, different, different other sources. I think some of you, um, uh, there is one site that I usually get sometimes questions from. It's called, uh, it's, it's a CPA Ghana, okay? It is a CPA Ghana site. Uh, that CPA Ghana, CPA Ghana, uh, they 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 bit uh, they bit similar to what we basically do. So they have uh, most some, most of the papers that we actually do here. So you can find uh, you can find some past papers on their website as well. Okay, but at least we have enough from our side of Icepal. Okay, so that shouldn't really have uh, any much worry for you. So that is uh, that is what I can say. So as section A, like I indicated, these are, these are usually, of course, these are usually objectives and they are 20, okay? 20 multi choice questions and each question carries one mark, okay? Each question carries one mark. And then definitely your section B has five questions and yours is to choose four questions, okay? Now, each question, yes, carries 20 marks. Each question carries 20 marks. 
And these are the questions now you write, uh, you write uh, in the booklet that you're given, okay? You write in the booklet of given. And of course, there are also some other instructions that you'll definitely find when you are looking at uh, the booklet, okay? Now, this is just uh, partly section B, okay? This is how section B will look like, but definitely the objectives, like I said, you can always access these objectives. Uh, you can find them, okay? In case you're part of my class, you should, uh, you, you'll be able to, to see some. I think I've shared some of these because we've had, I think, two, like, two or three revision classes where we've gone through objectives, okay? So those should, uh, continuously you should be able to, uh, to acquaint yourself with some of these past, past paper questions to be able to develop your confidence, okay? Now, I know some of you have come for this class because you think uh, we are going to start immediately, but I want to give, first give you some guidelines on uh, what is really going to help you pass this paper, okay? because I know it is very necessary. You know, you can actually go to the exam with a lot of knowledge and come out and get marks that you don't really deserve or even have to repeat the paper, okay? Not that because you don't know, there are actually people who pass financial accounting from, uh, from, from, uh, from let's say, from degree level and they go and do financial accounting at this level and they actually file, okay? Now, one of the things that you definitely really have to know is that uh, the pass, pass rate at ISPAO is really, 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 uh, is really not really good, okay? The pass rate uh, for ISPAO is not really good. And some of you who have done some papers at ISPAO will agree with me, okay? So for any student who wants to make sure that they pass uh, any CPA paper, you have to put in a lot of time, by the way, you get it, you have to put in a lot of time. And this a lot of time is into preparation, okay? For those that uh, uh, I think uh, yesterday I was speaking about the same thing, that you need, you need to make sure that you, you're practicing at least a number a day, okay? You need to be practicing at least a number a day. I know to some people we say, ha, a number day, will I really manage that? I, I want to tell you that it's, if you start it, it will get your mind and you start and along the way, it will actually be part of you. Okay, it may not be a number day. Do, okay, do, do, do at least maybe uh, one day after the other, okay? Do one day after the other and, and maybe say, I do on Monday, I do on Wednesday, and then I do on Friday, okay? So depending depending on um, what, what you really uh, may, may think about, but you have to make sure that you prepare for this exam extensively, okay? Like extensively, because at the end of the day, I, I talked to some, of, uh, some, some other people that I say that, you know, when it comes to, um, to, to financial accounting, this is the first paper that actually appears, okay? This is the first paper that appears on your transcript. And you, you don't want to make uh, this paper uh, look like it misrepresents you, okay? You don't want to uh, make this paper misrepresent you. And by misrepresenting you, I mean this paper going ahead to, let's say, have um, a lower mark, okay? I usually say that we are in a competitive world. And we're in a competitive world where just a single mark, okay? A single mark can either say, uh, can, either, can, can either give you an entrance into an organization or actually affect your whole process, okay? So it's, it's, it's really very, very important for you to know that all that you're doing, especially for this paper, is putting in enough time to make sure that you have at least good marks, okay? So it's um, it's really, 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 really tough, okay? It's really, really, really tough. And uh, I want you to basically know, just to give you an, a small insight, I think you can see, uh, especially for those that have never sat for CP, and I'm not scaring you, but I'm trying to give you the picture of your journey ahead, okay? Now, I think you can see uh, this were December 2020, uh, results, okay? And um, these were announced, as they were saying, of course they were saying, 
uh, this is for CPA, saying there was a 32.2 pass rate for CPA compared to 31.2 uh, in November 2019. Now, when somebody says 32%, okay, now this is a general one, okay? And you, you may not have got now on, on each paper. It means that if 100 students sat for a paper, if 100 students sat for a paper, on average, only 32 passed. Only 32 passed. Now it means that the whole 68 didn't pass. The whole 68 didn't pass. And why does that happen? You know why? Um, this afternoon I was talking to a student who, whom I was telling that when it comes to CPM, you're looking for the 50 marks. You're looking for the 50 marks from where? From the exam. Some of you how have been passed on the degree level. You know that for exams we used to do at degree level. You'd come in and um, go to the exam with already a coursework mark of let's say 20 marks. So only what you need to get from the exam is let's say 30 marks, okay? To just boost up the, the whatever you have to pass to pass the paper. But right here, you're going to the exam with all, let's say, with all that kind of, uh, with no mark at all. So you're going to look for all the 50 marks from the exam, okay? That is very important. And that is why you see CPA is failed terribly. And I know you've heard it from different people. And some of you have already been on the course before. And they have continuously told you that the high CPA, people just fail, okay? But you don't know why people fail. People fail because they have less preparation. Because the people that are studying CPA and some of you that are part of this course, you're very busy. Some of you are married. You have jobs that are demanding. You have whatever it is. So the time you give to, the, to, to this course is very limited, OK, compared to the time that you used to give to your degree level, OK? And that is why you see you need to put in an extra effort into your preparations to make sure that you're not part of this, the 60, okay, 68, but you squeeze yourself and be part of the 32%, okay? I know ISPAO gives you over, um, uh, ISPAO is giving you over 10 years. I think you've had this, but yours should not be to look at the 10, uh, the 10 years. You shouldn't be looking at the 10 years. Reason why? Because you want to finish this thing at a go and move on to other things, okay? Move on to other things. Because if, for example, you're just on level one, if you just have that mindset of 10 years, you're just going to, to, to give uh, less time to the, to, to the course, and you're going to find yourself that even after five years, you're still on level two. I actually have some students who are, at, who are undergoing such challenges, okay? And not to blame them because they, have, they could have different reasons, okay? But it should be maybe for a, a totally reason that you don't have control over. But any reason that you can really uh, concentrate and prepare you for exams rightly, okay? You have no excuse. Now, I understand we're in COVID and you know, you can see, this was, uh, this was actually December, 2020. And in your mind, you may, you may say, Icepa would have at least set a cheaper papers to just understand how things uh, how things were, okay? Because it was COVID, people were not studying and they set an exam and this is the pass rate. I will tell you that these people are not going to adjust any standard, okay? If that is the standard paper, that is how the paper will be set. And what will set you aside is making sure that you're preparing like you're in a normal situation, okay? I know some students were on the online, uh, online learning uh, where you've subscribed for the Zoom classes and you're learning, you've changed your mind, you've changed your perspective that you can actually still learn. There are some other people that are still saying, uh, ah, me, I cannot learn. Actually, they usually in books, they say, I'm waiting for the physical classes. Now, when will the physical classes come? In case the physical classes don't come up soon, does it mean that you're not going to progress for your CPA? It's very important for you, okay? Now, right now, uh, especially for my friends that are preparing for this exam that is happening in October. Right now, uh, we have about less than a month, okay? I'll say less than a month to the exam, okay? Of course, removing, let's say, we're just removing the weekend, less than a month to the exam. And what does it mean to, to be less than a month to the exam? It means that you have a very limited time, okay? 
even if you try to do, if you to do, uh, let's say a number a day, you're going to do just about 20 numbers, okay? And remember there are several topics that you need to be able to try out and practice. Now that is a challenge in its own. And that is why this session is to open your eyes and, and check yourself and say, how am I studying, okay? How am I preparing for this exam? I'll tell you that myself that uh, we, we went through this journey. I went through CPA, I also did CPA, okay? But we did, we, we put in a lot of time to make sure that we, we pass uh, some of these papers at first attempt, okay? So that is the same thing that I would really encourage you. If you're preparing for this paper in, let's say, October, you have to totally change your strategy. I know uh, writing down timetables is a rudimentary way of doing things. We used to do it in high school, but this is something you should be able to do. Get down and say, what topics am I in, 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 this, in this paper, okay? And what should, should I exactly be uh, looking at right now? And that is why um, I encourage everyone Wherever you, you're studying CPA, okay? Wherever you are studying a CPA paper, make sure you have a full understanding of what is on your journey. And that journey is best demonstrated by what is within your, your syllabus, okay? What is within your syllabus. As you can see, this is the financial accounting syllabus. And here, uh, as they are giving us, these are, these are just like our learning outcomes. So by learning outcomes, it means that this is what the examiner basically expects you to know at, at the completion of the course. In simple ways, this is what the examiner expects you to know before you actually go to the exam, okay? Before you actually go to the exam. So whatever they are setting, they have it in mind that this student knows the role of accounting and accountants. As simple as that, okay? So the examiner will just get a question and say, explain the roles of accountants in Uganda, especially during the time of COVID. And you're like, wow, no, we didn't study that. But it was on your syllabus and you should have gotten to see this, okay? Because you cannot study financial accounting and you even don't know what, what accountants do, okay? So it's very important for you to uh, uh, have that in mind. And of course, uh, things like the, uh, the financial reporting framework. And with financial reporting framework, we're trying to say what, uh, what are the different bodies that regulate the way we report, okay? Like for example, ISPA, IFAC, okay? The National uh, Federation of Accountants, uh, things like the Company Act, okay? Company Act also regulates the way we do. All these things, the IFRS, the ISCs, all come within here, within the financial reporting framework. And that is even where the conceptual framework comes in here. I know those that have been part of my class, I think I emphasize more when it comes to the conceptual framework. The one that goes ahead to define what an asset is, to define what uh, a liability is, to define what an expense is, to define and so on. Now, they may not ask you to maybe define those things. If they do ask you, well and good. But you should be able to understand all these things because you either find it in section B or somebody will just create, um, will just create, let's say, an objective and say the following are elements of financial statements, except so they say A, capital, B, assets, C, liabilities, maybe D, expenses. You get it, okay? And maybe uh, whatever whatever they may want to include that is the exception of the list. And if you've not looked at uh, this introduction bit of it, I know some of you, uh, when you speak of financial accounting, all you think about are values, uh, are basically our values, are values. Now you forget that they are basically free marks that you actually get by, uh, by doing the theoretical questions, okay? Different, different papers come with at least some theoretical questions to favor those, those that have done some preparations, okay? For example, and now it's, I think you can see, this could be two marks, but you know, these two marks can really help you. You know how I have actually gotten students uh, who have reached out to me uh, and said, I actually got 48 out of the, from this paper. And they say, I wish I, I could actually, the examiner was masterful to add me the two marks to make it 50. And I'm like, but you didn't, you didn't, you, 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 you didn't, you didn't give uh, the examiner the reasons. 
Now, some of you uh, uh, don't uh, prepare for some of these uh, theoretical parts of the questions, yet they can give. Now, for example, entrepreneurship. They ask you, differentiate between an entrepreneurial venture from small business, okay? All this information, you find it within your notes, okay? Some of it could be from general knowledge, okay? Could be general knowledge because you know what a small business is and you know what an entrepreneurial venture is, okay? And then you're able to distinguish and provide and also provide examples, okay? By the way, when you're answering the theoretical questions, the best thing to, to, to attract the examiner to give you the marks that you're interested in is including some examples, okay? Including some examples of the of whatever is really happening. So we can we can say we are ready for the paper, but we have to create an evaluation, okay? And that's why I'm saying that your syllabus is the key document that will help you and guide you accordingly, especially on your journey, okay? All these things, as you can see, qualitative. Now I think you can you've seen the other side. We've just seen uh, asking us to list two characteristics of, uh, of, of less financial information. Right here, it's actually part of the learning outcomes. And this is what I'm telling you exactly. As you have it here, as it is qualitative ethics of financial information, the examiner will just get to, to, to the exam and they will just formulate, by the way, they will just change the narration. Let me, let me just show you. I think we just saw it here. Uh -huh. Explain to fundamental ethics that make financial information provided in financial statements useful to users. This time they provided two marks. Of course, two marks is so small, but I've told you the importance of the two marks. But in the same way, these two marks can make a big difference on your journey. They can either put you under the 32% pass rate or the 68% people that are not are going to repeat the paper, okay? And remember, you've invested a lot of money on this journey. So you don't want, and not even money, but invested time. I actually value if time even more than money because money you can make it, but time is irrepressible. You cannot replace time, okay? That's why you need to go through this uh, course outline in depth and see, do I understand everything? Especially for my friends that are preparing for uh, for, for the October exam. Those that are preparing for the December exam, you still have some time, but that should also not give you a guarantee. The information I'm giving you right now should help you pull up the socks and say, eh, I'm seeing like I have a lot of time to, let's say to the exam, but when I look at the things that are really ahead of me, I think I may not handle, okay? I think I may not, not handle. And that should really open your mind to really understand what exactly you have, okay? The same thing when it comes to recording uh, uh, transactions, the books of prime entry and ledgers. I know uh, it's a long time since they last said uh, recording books of prime entry, but this is what the examiner expects you. And that is why you see, because you're going to fix yourself on past papers, past papers, somebody is going to bring you a question and say, uh, the following transactions were uh, sales on credit uh, for uh, maybe ABC Limited. So they give you the different credit sales. Prepare a sales the book for this transaction. And you're like, how? How does a sales the book look like? Okay. Because you 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 spotted, you you spotted the exam, you, you were basically you you just went to through the course outline and you were tapping on each item, each item like that, each item like that. So that keeps on disturbing you uh, along the way. Okay. So it's very important to take note of every element that you have within the course outline, okay? Everything is important, okay? Because when it comes to, let's say, recording transactions, the books of prime entry and ledgers, this is the accounting process. Some of you know uh, the accounting process uh, by right now because you are part of my classes, okay? That we know that uh, transactions start from where? They start from the source documents, okay? They start from the source documents and our source documents are the invoices, are the receipts, at the, uh, at the payment vouchers and so on, okay? Because that is where a, where a business person will start from, from recording, okay? And from the recording of those source documents, we now move to our books of prime entry where good items are entered for the very first time before they are posted into the ledgers, okay? They are entered for the very first time and it's within the books of prime entry that we have the sales day book, the purchases day book, okay? the general journal, okay, and so on. And the returns inwards journal, the return outwards journal, okay. As we, for example, we have the sales day book, the sales day book can also be called a sales journal, okay. 
And you know very well that a sales journal records items bought on, okay, the sales journal records items sold on credit. Purchases journal records items that are bought on credit, okay? As, as somebody will ask, so where are the cash purchases and cash sales recorded? Those are recorded in the cash book, okay? Those are recorded in the cash book. The cash book is also one of those uh, books of prime entry. The cash book itself, but also the pet cash book as well. The pet cash book is also a book of prime entry, okay? Because immediately as the transaction happens, the word prime is like original entry. Actually, they can be called books of prime entry, or they can also be called books of original entry, okay? And you know that once we have the ledgers, it's from the, or once we have, sorry, the, the books, it's from that information that we now draw the ledgers. Now, you'll find that in most of the, the, the books of a prime entry, we usually have, um, we usually, we usually have it's basically like single entry, okay? We just, uh, we just have like a column of uh, date, uh, detail and then amount. Like for example, if you have, you're drawing up your sales the book, it's just basically the date column, detail and amount, okay? And basically now in the sales the book, you record your credit sales, that is all. And then you find it, you find, of course you give it a heading and then find uh, the total down. But now when it comes to, um, when it actually comes to the ledgers, you know that, for every debit, there should be a corresponding credit, okay? For every debit, there should be a corresponding credit. For example, and like from the accounting process, if I'm moving transactions from, uh, from, from let's say from the sales debt book, which we've agreed that the sales debt book records credit sales, okay? It means that if I'm taking it to the ledger, basically I'm picking the total that is from the sales debt book and I'm taking this to the ledger and what am I doing? I'm debiting, my account receivables, okay? Because accounts receivables relate with the credit sales, okay? Those are the people that are, will pay me in the, in the future, okay? I've sold them on, on credit and they'll pay me in the future. So I have my accounts receivables. And then the other I will do is I'll credit my sales, okay? I'll credit my sales. So I've done two things. I've debited my accounts receivables and I've credited my sales. And that is when I'm transferring into my ledgers, okay? And once I know that I have, of course, all my items from the sales, uh, from the books of prime entry, they are now posted into the ledgers. I balance them off, okay? I balance them off. And then after balancing them off, I now move these, trans these balances into what we refer to as a trial balance, okay? We, tr we transfer this into what we refer to as a trial balance. Now, within the trial balance, in the same way we can have, um, what we call the adjusting entries, which are which sometimes we call the end of year adjustments. Now, our end of year adjustments could include simple things like prepayments, okay? Simple things like uh, accruals, things, simple things like depreciation and so on, okay? Now, all you have to know is what is the accounting process? By the way, you can never, you can, you, if you want, if you're going for financial accounting class, okay, exam, and you don't know the accounting process, then you don't. Sometimes they can even act by the ask, explain the accounting process, and they can give it like eight marks, okay? And that is just a very simple thing. It's just an understanding of if, if for example, today I come and buy, for example, from uh, KFC, I come and buy chicken. How does that transaction move? in its process to get to the financial statement that they are going to either publish or send to the shareholders. That should be your questioning mark, okay? What is the process? And I, I will tell you that, by the way, in financial accounting, we actually studied the accounting process. In summary, we studied the accounting process. That is why we start from down to study uh, how the books of pr prime entry are, how we move to this to the ledgers, how we move this to the trial balance, now, when, when after trial balance, we even go to study the adjusting entries, the prepayments, the accruals, the provisions for bad debts, and so on, okay? And from there, now we now start breaking down. We start the manufacturing accounts, like the last class we had on Saturday for those students that are studying the normal class. They will now, we break it down now in manufacturing. We now go, we study the nanny for profit. We now study uh, the partnerships. We go ahead to uh, study again, um, uh, sole trader, okay? We, 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 we just, 
rotate around the accounting process. We study suspense because uh, some uh, tribe, sometimes they, uh, they are kind of errors that we incur before we move transactions to the trial balance. So everything that we study is by, by the way around the accounting process, okay? So you should really understand these things on your fingertips and understand just like the way I think you can see the preparation of the trial balance. Basically, we, we, are, we have now started on our, on our accounting process. And from the trial balance, as you can see, we are now moving to the financial statements. And this is the breakdown I'm saying. We study for business organizations. We, we go ahead to study for manufacturing concerns. We study uh, for uh, nanny for profit. And then we now move to uh, reconciling. And under reconciling financial transactions here is where we have uh, the bank reconciliation coming in, okay? The bank reconciliation coming in and, uh, and we have to make sure that we prepare the bank reconciliation statement. And then the other is preparing the accounts and financial statements from incomplete records. The incomplete records are so much common with uh, small, small businesses uh, because these small businesses don't have uh, systems. They also had higher accountants. So you'll find scant information. One business, you'll find them with only the sales book where they record the, their data sales and maybe where they record maybe purchases and that's all they have. And then you have now to determine, uh, you have to determine their, their total sales, you have to determine their purchases, you have to determine uh, their last cash balance and so on before you can prepare the financial statements, okay? We'll be looking at this uh, as we proceed uh, with our classes ahead. And then of course, the other is understanding and applying general features of financial statements, okay? And then the other is applying international financial reporting standards. Now, you should understand that uh, this paper, financial accounting feeds into a next paper, okay? Which next paper is actually paper eight. And I would encourage you that after you've passed this paper, the next paper you should be looking at is financial reporting. And by the way, you can be allowed to do a paper at the next level, even without uh, finishing, uh, finishing a given level, as long as the paper does not contradict with the other, okay? And then as long as you're also registering for all your remaining papers, for example, if you have three papers on, let's say on level one and you do financial accounting, you have financial accounting, cost and management, and then duty. In case you're doing, for example, right now, financial accounting and duty, and you pass all of them, you can choose to do now a paper eight with the cost and management accounting on level one, okay? If you're remaining with, let's say, one or two papers, you are allowed to move the next step. So this is this is the this is the paper that has uh, 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 builds on to the international accounting standards they are talking about here. Now, for matters of the exam, especially for the accounting uh, financial accounting class and for the financial accounting exam, there are some standards that you should go to the exam knowing how these standards play. Okay, and one of the standards that you should be looking at is uh, IS two which is inventory, okay? You should go to the exam when you know that standard because that's, as, as we know that we study more detailed standards at in level two, our inventory is one of those standards that we, we bring in, we try to start on in level one, okay? So inventory is uh, very key, IS2. The other is IS16, and that is uh, plant property and equipment. That one is also uh, a standard that you should know. And you know, when it comes to, for example, when it comes to inventory, you should be able to know, uh, of course, uh, what does the standard say, the disclosures, uh, uh, the recognition and so on. But then you, see, you know, with inventory, we even get down to, uh, to different inventory models like FIFO, uh, AVCO, by AVCO, I mean average cost, you get it. Uh, of course, LIFO, LIFO is uh, last in, first out is not, uh, is not a recommended one, but you also need to know how it plays, okay? So you need to know those different inventory models within there. They can actually bring you a question and they can ask you to use FIFO to determine, let's say, maybe the cost of inventory at the end of the financial year. So that is something that you should be looking out in that area. When it comes to uh, IS-16, some of the things that you should be looking out in that area are things to do with um, uh, with depreciation, okay? Uh, depreciation, but even before depreciation, look at the recognition of assets, okay? Recognition of assets. And by recognition of assets, one of the things that the examiner usually tests here is something to do with revenue and capital expenditures. 
revenue and capital expenditures. Basically, the examiner wants you wants to know if you actually know what is embedded within uh, the cost of any uh, any, any any let's say any asset. Okay. And uh, they will give you, a, for example, a question where they are saying maybe uh, ABC Limited bought, uh, let's say, uh, bought a machine from Nairobi, and this was the transport, this was the VAT in car, this was the import duty, these were the installation costs, and then they'll give you things like, for example, uh, maybe this is the value uh, that uh, maybe this was the fuel from transporting it from one place to the other. Then yours is now to determine which of these costs do I capitalize, and by capitalize mean which of these costs do I add on the value of the asset, okay? Which of these costs do I add on the value of the asset? And of course, the other thing is also to understand which of which, which costs do I now expense, which we call the revenue expenditures, okay? You need to understand if, if uh, I, I may be speaking uh, some French here, but just to show you something small, especially around, um, I don't know if this paper does have it. Yes, this paper has it. This is... Um, uh, this is December 2020, the paper that I earlier displayed. Now, like I said, IS-16, this is where the examiner, this is where the, what the examiner usually tests, okay? Usually tests you when they bring you such a, a full question on depreciation, they will actually not, not only depreciation, but they will have depreciation, they will have a disposal account and maybe a bank account as well. Now, like I indicated, Mainly here, the examiner wants to um, wants to examine you, of course, on things to do with uh, how to uh, depreciation, but then they also want to examine you on uh, the revenue and capital expenditure. So we have we have um, we have something here, uh, uh, something here that they they actually indicated uh, where, for example, I think they were buying a grader. This is one of the asset. This is one of the assets they had here but then they were buying another grader that was re replacing the earlier grader as a part exchange and down here they are telling us that um, the company topped up 120 million to meet the full invoice price and they're also saying that the following additional costs were incurred clearing and taxes worth 50 million freight worth 28 million and then they are saying upon clearance the company incurred four million to transport it from Kampala to the road site in Gulu. Now, this is this is where the examiner is testing you the revenue and capital expenditures. And you should really you should note those things if you're watching this session or listening to this and you have a pen and paper, not something called revenue and capital expenditure. Those are very key things to understand. Now, capital expenditure are those expenditures that increase, okay, incre that up increase on the value of the asset. Those are expenditures that increase on the value of the asset. And they also are costs that help the asset in bring, they hope in bring the asset into operation. Okay. They hope in bring the asset into operation. Now, like we've seen here, we have um, the clearing and the clearing and taxes, and then we have uh, the freight. And then we have, uh, yes, let's just speak about clearing and, and taxes and then freight. Now, these costs are incurred in bringing this new grader into operation, okay? And if we had, let's say, an installation cost, all that will be part of the cost that we are going to recognize for this asset, okay? Now, these are capital expenditures because they are part of the value of the asset. I'll give you other like examples of uh, capital expenditures and revenue expenditures. If you have a building, okay? If you have a building and you, let's say, you, you paint that building, okay? We have two scenarios. You, you have a building, you go and paint it. That is one scenario. And then you have a building, and then you go and uh, maybe add an extra room. Now, first scenario, when you just paint a, a building and just make it look good and so on, that is a revenue expenditure. Whatever you've incurred does not, is not added to the value of the building but it is rather expensed in what? In the P and L, okay? As a repair and maintenance expense. But if you're adding an extra building or you just, okay, adding an extra room or you're just expanding the available rooms for them to be able to accommodate maybe a bigger capacity. Now that is a capital expenditure that should be added, 
Okay, so that should also give you uh, a good understanding of what I mean by capital expenditure. So the same thing happens also when it comes to when it comes to here. This cost where they are telling us that the company incurred four million to transport the grader from Kampala to the road construction site in Gulu. This cost is not a capital expenditure and should not should not be added to the value of the asset. This cost is not a, a capital and should not, this is a revenue expenditure that should be expensed where? In the P and L, okay? So here the examiner, that is what the examiner was trying to test you, okay? The examiner was trying to test you to make sure that you understand how everything of, uh, how everything that relates to assets interplay, okay? So it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, very important for you to have that in mind when, you, when you're preparing for such an exam. As you, as you can see, this is a full question and they're asking you for, uh, to prepare a consolidated NANI uh, current asset account. By consolidated means you don't have to break down uh, respective assets. You just draw up a single asset account and then include uh, all the respective assets. And then we have, of course, they are telling us the consolidated uh, attributed depreciation in the same way you're also putting everything uh, at a go in one account. The same thing with a disposal account. Now, disposal account, some, most of you now know, know what a disposal account. I usually call it a market, uh, the market, the asset marketplace account because before any asset is sold off, we have to make sure that we transfer, before any asset is sold off, we have to make sure that we are actually transferring all goods to the disposal account. So you should be able to know how to draw it. And these things are simple. We actually had, as, as some of my students, we actually did this number in uh, either, either, either maybe the second or last uh, meetup, but we did this number somewhere, okay? So in case you missed, uh, I think we could be able to share with you a recording uh, so that you can know how to do these things. But today I just felt like I, I would want to dig deep into, give you an insight onto this, okay? And then of course, um, we have this part that some of uh, some people may take uh, for granted, the entrepreneurship bit of it. Uh, now for you to understand why we study this part of entrepreneurship is we are not just preparing you as people who are going to look for jobs, okay? But we also want to give you that insight that can be able to use the knowledge that you have to be able to earn a living through business, okay? And you know very well that as accountants, once you have the CPA qualification, after you've earned your CPA qualification and uh, you've uh, listed, taken uh, over three years of experience, this experience can either be post uh, or can either be pre before finishing or after finishing, then you're licensed, you're licensed as a member, okay? And after you're licensed as a member, uh, you can also apply to go ahead and uh, practice you can, uh, and, and run an audit firm, okay? And I think that's where you see most audit firms have the word certified public accountant. So this course is not just preparing you for uh, to be able to go and look for jobs, but also preparing you to actually be able to start up businesses, become the next consultants and become the next audit firm uh, CEOs and, and so on, okay? So entrepreneurship is, uh, is, is a key part of this course and you have, uh, you have a lot of knowledge around here from just simple things that you actually see. If you get down onto um, uh, the course outline, you will see the breakdown of all these things. They are very, very simple things that you relate. Somebody will ask you, explain the challenges of uh, entrepreneurs in Uganda, especially during the time of COVID. And we'll put 10 marks and you like, 10 marks, those are marks that you should be able to get. By the way, I'll tell you that within the first 15 minutes, this, uh, this first 15 minutes that they indicate on the paper, what I usually, uh, what I usually basically do is uh, if I find those, those, those questions, if I find those questions like uh, having eight marks, theoretical questions, within these 15 minutes, I'm even able to use uh, to just note down, just reflect on some on on some on on some points, just reflect and say, let me try to list and see. Even before I choose the question, by the way, because you know you can get to a, a question and like uh, they want uh, eight mark, they want eight eight challenges. Can I really get them now within the fifteen minutes? 
that's something that you should be looking at and see do I, I, do I really have uh, do I, can we, I really think about this thing okay so I usually like they say you sh you you may not start to write your answer so you shouldn't write in the booklet okay you shouldn't write in the answer booklet but within your within within this some of, some of us read by by writing down or by underlining okay and that is why I, I, I just use that those 15 minutes just not some few things on, on just my question on just just pointers on my question paper during those uh, minutes as I'm trying to think before I choose any question I need to make sure that at least I have ideas if it's like a paper like this uh, definitely of course these are calculations you may not easily uh, know uh, much but one of the things that I encourage you to benefit to use these 15 minutes rightly you know objectives take a lot of time okay and uh, you don't you don't want to read through an objective and start answering and thinking about the answer. Now you're going to end up utilizing all the 15 minutes on objectives. Okay. So what I usually do is the 15 minutes first leave objectives. Actual objectives should be your last your last thing to come back to. What you do first run to section B. Okay. First run to section B immediately say start. First run to section B. And yours should be every time you get to a question, every time you get to a question, don't even start reading from here before you even find out what the, what the examiner is actually interested in. First run to what is the required. For example, this one is saying prepare Mama Arena's retail shop uh, business as, uh, as at 31st December 2019. They want the ledger accounts, they want the statement of profit and loss, they want this uh, statement of financial position. Now, mine is to now run back. Since I've understood, now I read through the question. Now, what happens is once you're reading through the question and you already know what the examiner is interested in, already you answer, like you're generating answers in the mind, okay? I now read through and say, uh, okay, uh, Mama, uh, Mama Fina runs a retail shop in uh, Nakutunya Soroti with her shop. So so uh, so so on. She does not keep her business records according to the double entry system. The following balances were now. This is where the single entry. Uh, this is the single entry comes in. Okay, so this is a single entry question. The fact that they are saying she does not keep her, her business records. So it means the information they have given to you is a bit scanty. So you have to find it. And I think that is why you see, you're seeing question marks here. Okay, you're seeing respective question mark. It means that you're going to. You're going to, to calculate some of these things. By the way, to, to be able to master, especially when it comes to uh, single entry questions, you have to master what we call the control accounts. Okay? You have to understand the control accounts. Actually, I, I run a class on control accounts. It's one of, uh, one of the, my favorite classes. Control accounts. Control accounts help you in finding all these balances. Okay? They help you in finding all these balances. So as you go through this, this it has already even given you uh, a thought about the question to decide and say, will I really do this question? Or maybe I need to think of another question, okay? Because at the end of the day, each question you choose, each question you choose, you should make sure that you're earning at least a 15 mark and above, okay? Each question you should choose, you should be able to earn 15 marks and above, unless there are circumstances where you actually uh, maybe you you didn't prepare rightly, rightly and you've got the exam and you don't even have any any three questions to choose where you're really confident that you get the 15 marks but that is one thing that i should be able to tell you so as i go through this i should be able to know how have i prepared for uh numbers around uh, single entry single entry and then from there i can be able to build confidence i know that okay since I've done like five numbers before of single entry, okay, then this number should not be hard. By the way, if you can do about five questions per each topic, for example, just like the way we, we, we saw this number on depreciation, if you can do five similar numbers of depreciation like this, I'll tell you that you will not find challenges in the exam. You will not you will not find challenges in the exam. Every, every, every question you get to, it, things will just work out for you because you've practiced these things. And I want to give you a secret, but the examiners don't 
get these questions from, let's say, counter books, okay, from maybe textbooks, uh, from online. The examiners don't have time, okay, to even set questions. You know what they do? They just come to a past paper question. For example, if I was setting for financial accounting, what I'll just do, I'll just go and look for a paper of, let's say, 2014. And for example, this is the paper. And this paper was saying the following, for, because I know that I, ideally, the, you hardly remember. Definitely, of course, the last three papers, you can easily know that the examiner picked it from here. But for the last past, past paper questions, you may hardly know. So just get here and say, here we set and we call it reliable constructions. So I'll just call it and say, okay, you know, there has been a lot of uh, trending about, uh, about maybe this organization, okay? Or this in individual. And I'll say maybe this is this is Lumbuye Construction Limited. So you'll be excited and say, eh, hey, this guy has even, even knows Lumbuye. And the guy has just adjusted this and they'll come and adjust here. Definitely, of course, for every 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 paper, they will start, they will try to put a recent, recent date. Okay. So I adjust if I'm setting a 2021 paper, I'll, I'll put 2020. And I'll just come and adjust. Of course, here I put this is 2017. I'll call it now, I'll, I'll call it 20, 2020. Okay, to make sure that my years are correlating. Okay, right, this will be 2021. Like that, I'll keep on adjusting. I'll just say, okay, maybe also not to look like a paper that looks like uh, they have seen before. I'll come and adjust and put uh, this to be 500. And I'll come and adjust and this, change it totally and put 150. Okay, and put 150. Right there, I'll change. I'll come and say, uh, maybe, uh, this statement looks like like what? So I'll come and adjust here. Instead of putting, let's say, clearing and taxes, clearing and taxes, I'll come and say this is VAT. I'll come and break down the taxes and say VAT this amount, import duty this amount, like that. And at the end of the day, there's a fresh question has been produced out of this. When you get to the exam and you see this question in front of you, it will totally become new question like you've never seen it. Now, a student who has been practicing these questions and has practiced, let's say five questions from the past sitting, this student will be able to look at the question, say this question looks similar, okay? All looks familiar, but will still not be able to relate because they are seeing recent deaths in the question. But I will tell you that the time this student will take on this question will be very small compared to the time that you're going to take on this question, okay? Because for you, you've never done even two numbers on this topic. So even when you get here, you're like, ah, what does even consolidated non-current asset mean? What does this thing of consolidated accumulated depreciation mean? So you can't totally understand because you've not practiced. And that's why practice is very key. And I want to tell you that, and I continue to repeat this, that financial accounting, has two things. It's, it's not only just knowing things, but also being able to practice and improve on your time management skills. Time management skills are very key. And the reason why the time management skills are very key is because these papers, you can see it, it has section A and then it has section B. Now for you, you might feel like, huh, I can actually do these questions. But I've even ever sat down and do this paper. I want to tell you. I want. To, I want to tell you that uh, some people, because you've uh, okay, you, this is your first time to do CPA. You've never done a three hours paper. Maybe you did it at a campus long time ago. And remember that time you were doing a paper that already you have thirty marks in uh, maybe in coursework. So you are looking for a few marks. Now this paper you are looking for all the marks from actually the exam. So it means that this paper is a bit different. And that is why I would encourage you, by the way, if you can, you can actually get a paper and say, I'm going to do um, a paper that was set for June 2018. Just try to create some three hours and 15 minutes. Go to a, a private environment and just time yourself and do those questions. You get it within that time, that will open your eyes that after the, the end of the three hours, you'd have only done like two or three questions and all the other questions are remaining pending. And you know what happens to the exam? You've not done, you've, you've not practiced to get the exam. You've spent, for example, this is three hours and 15 minutes. You've spent, uh, let's say 
two hours and a half and you're on the second question and the examiner says, you have one hour and a half to go and you're shivering. And that alone just disorganizes you, okay? That alone disorganizes. And that is why you see during the times when I'm doing revisions, as students who are part of my revision class will agree with me. I don't only teach you how to answer these questions, but I give you the, 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 the basic the strategies for completing these things, okay? Just like the way, for example, we have, for example, right here, they're telling us required, prepare these uh, ledger accounts, reflect the transactions. And they're telling us, prepare a consolidated non-current asset account. One student will just get down and will just start from consolidated non-current asset account and prepare that one up to the end and balance it off. And again, start the consolidated accumulated depreciation account and finish it and now move to the disposal account. The bright student will know that for me to manage and pass this paper and manage this time very well, I'm going to, to draw up these respective accounts immediately. I'm going to go to my answer sheet, of course, continue leaving space, draw up my non current asset account, debit credit, draw the T, T account, create some space there, move to the next. No one will blame you by that for leaving a lot of space between uh, one, one part to the other, because the, that's, that's the best way to manage time. So I leave space and move to the next part like that. So when I come to now read through the question, whatever I read, I'm inputting. I'm inputting something here. I'm inputting something here. I'm inputting something here. By the end, I get to the last point here. I've actually finished all these accounts, okay? By the end, I've, I got, I get here, I've actually finished the accounts. It's the same thing also when it comes to uh, numbers, for example, even when it comes to bank reconciliation, I will tell you, that the best thing to do is not to first do an adjusted cash book and finish it and now open your bank reconciliation statement. Remember, on what you need to record in the bank reconciliation statement is what? Is only the balances per adjusted cash book. It's the only thing that you're picking from here to actually take to your bank reconciliation statement. So what does that mean? That means that you can actually draw up these two accounts uh, together. So I will draw up my adjusted cash book somewhere, leave some space and start also on the bank reconciliation statement. So that when I'm trying to review, uh, try to, trying to tick off here, if I get, for example, uh, a direct credit, okay? Or maybe some, um, or, or maybe let's say, use an example of a direct debit. Maybe there are bank charges and standing orders. And I see them, for example, uh, when I get down here and I'm seeing things like, for example, this is my bank statement. So I'm seeing things like interest, commission, ledger fees, and then I have a standing order. Definitely those I'll move and do what and record them in that just said cash book. But in the same way, I'll also get to, uh, I'll get to here and I'm looking at some checks that for example, are on the credit side here, I already created them in let's say in my, in my cash book, but I don't see them on, the, on what? On my bank statement. Then I know that that is unpresented check. So I'll move immediately and put it within my bank reconciliation statement. So instead of waiting to first finish this again and, and again, I come back and again, relook in this thing all together. I'll start with, I'll start one thing by one. I'll start, uh, for example, I'll start from this thing. I check on it. Once I know that I've ticked it and I've finished it, I know that I've, I, I'm either maybe making an entry in the adjusted cash book or I'm making the entry in the bank reconciliation. Then I know that once I'm, I've finished my adjusted cash book right here, all that I will need to do is pick a value from the balances per adjusted cash book, put it in my bank reconciliation statement, just come and finalize and balance it off and, and I'm, I'm done. Now, even when you caught up by time, by the way, I want to tell you, even if you caught up by time and you've, you didn't complete your, your adjusted cash book, but you have entries in your bank reconciliation statement already. Like for example, your uncredited checks, your unpresented checks, maybe you also have some correction of bank errors. Then the examiner will not fail to mark you in the bank reconciliation statement because you're missing the adjusted uh, ba balance of as per adjusted cash book. They will not, remember here, you're trying to earn marks on, on what? On, on entries. By the financial accounting, the best way to pass it is to learn how to earn marks from entries. Every entry you make is a mark, okay? And that's why some people struggle because I want to balance it off. I want to finish it off. You finish, you take over 20 minutes balancing off a question. 
yet you would have used those 20 minutes to earn over 20 marks on another question by just putting entries, okay? And actually the strategy I would want to tell you that if you're going for an exam, never, never bother to balance off a question before you've actually looked at different other questions. Even when I come to, for example, uh, this is my, uh, this is question that was asking me to generalize the transaction. Definitely I'll generalize the transaction, but once I'm done with generalizing transactions, I'll start immediately. I'll draw up my P&L somewhere, and I also draw up my uh, financial position somewhere. I will draw already the, 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 let's say the formats, okay? The heading and uh, later the T account and so on. So whatever I know, because I know that the reason why they have put this statement of financial position after the statement of P and L is because I'm going to get either profit and loss that I'm going to transfer here and add it on my written earnings to be able to include it within my equity, okay? So that's the only thing that I need from the statement of profit and loss. So even if I have anything that challenges me under statement of profit and loss, maybe I don't understand it. It does not limit me from earning the max that I can actually earn from what? from my statement of financial position. So you have to make sure, you have to be strategic. And that is why you should struggle because uh, now I failed to prepare the statement of profit and loss, but then you know you, you actually know some of it, some things that you can actually include in statement of financial position. Because for example, if this is the question you, you are attempting, okay, this is, this, is, this is a question. And this is, this is the trial balance that they have actually given to you. There are certain things that you're not going to do any calculation on because there is no additional information that has been provided on that, that item, okay? For example, if I'm to come here, this, okay, motor vehicle may need depreciation, but there are certain things like share capital. This share capital, as it has been given, we have five, five, uh, five, five, six. When you get down, you, you get to realize that there is no adjustment on share capital at all here, okay? There is no adjustment at all on share capital. So you know very well that this value goes direct to the statement of financial position without any adjustment. And isn't that a free mark for, for just put it, pulling something from up, from the trial balance and putting it, there's no adjustment to do it. But because you want to fix your mind and you're like, now I don't know these, these journal entries, I really don't know them. Even when I come to this question and I don't know how to generalize transactions, it does not stop me from jumping to the statement of P&L and statement of financial position to be able to get, to get whatever marks I can get even if I don't balance them off, okay? Like I've told you, don't balance off these numbers. Unless you're really good at your time management, you can do that. But what you should do is within the last an hour or 30 minutes, based on your speed, come back and now freshen back your questions. Read through and see and balance off, press your calculator and calculate all those totals. The reason why it is dangerous to waste a lot of time on balancing off is even as you're pressing your calculator. Remember, this is an examination environment. You're going to find yourself, instead of pressing uh, three zeros on something, you're going to press two zeros. And you're going to get a funny answer and then come back again and press the calculator. You're going to waste a lot of time on balancing off. And remember what you're looking for? You're only looking for uh, a, a total value. For example, if you're balancing off a P and L, only what you're looking for is the profit and loss, the, the profit or loss. The bottom figure, you've already earned the max of uh, uh, incomes, uh, let's say maybe your sales, less cost of sales, gross profit and so on. Uh, expenses, you've already earned those max. Whatever you're looking for is just that car profit down and it is taking over your max. It's even confusing you. For example, when you get to the statement of uh, financial position and you balance it off and it doesn't balance, that alone stresses you. You'll be there, you figure out, you struggle, you struggle, you're spending a lot of time. By the time you finish the examiner is like, you have one hour to go. And you're like, what? One hour to go when I have just, when we've just started? You, it's one hour to go because you've not managed your time rightly. And that's why you see this paper is not only about just understanding, but also about strategy. And by the way, you can master this strategy, of course, by attending some of the classes, like my revision classes, but you can also master this strategy by practicing, okay? By practicing. A time like this, I know, uh, a time like this, I know we, 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 have, uh, we have less, or we have less kind of, uh, less, let's say, uh, we have less opportunities, especially when it, when it, when it comes to uh, trying out, uh, discussion groups, okay? When it comes to trying out discussion groups. But 
find ways of how to try out maybe a question, try out a question, and then uh, maybe find a colleague whom, whom can, who can also try out this question and maybe you balance. You, you, just, you just mark yourself basically, okay? Uh, for example, if I'm preparing for an exam and maybe Jen is also preparing for the exam, we said that we are now trying to look at uh, 2018, okay? 2018, uh, maybe June, okay? And if you know that you're looking at uh, 2018, June, you, you try out the number and at the end of the day, you, you share the solutions and after you've shared the solutions, then you're able to understand how did you then apply, uh, start the question. How did they, how did they uh, approach the question? And how did I approach the question? From there, you're able to share ideas. And at the end of the day, it helps you to even prepare rightly, okay? So it's uh, pretty important for you to understand that what is going to make you pass, okay? What is going to make you pass is not only, uh, is not only understanding knowledge, understanding these things, but it's also, being able to strategize and practice you get it to practice so make sure that you are doing that over and over time okay so i don't know uh, if you have any question make sure that if you have any question use the chat box so uh so that we can be able to proceed uh let me let me know is the information helpful uh just within the chat box can i just get to hear some people to tell me if the information is helpful in the chat. Yeah, it is. It is helpful to me. Yeah, it is helpful to me as well. But I wanted the, if we could look at the incomplete records then maybe later on in some other some other class revision class depreciation question uh, thank you uh, like i indicated we have we have we have different classes and we've actually done previous classes and actually when you join in for the revision classes i'll be able to give you the recordings for the previous classes where we've done some of these questions so you shouldn't have to worry about that All right, I uh, thank you so much for the comments that are coming through. Uh, I like the fact that uh, this is helpful. Like I said, uh, you, can, you can actually get out of the exam thinking you've actually passed when you've actually messed up, okay? So it's very important for you to know that um, whatever you're preparing for, you under, and this is not on, by the way, this is not only for financial accounting. This is all, for all the papers, okay? This is for the, all the papers. You should understand a paper. I know that, okay, what are my strategies for passing this paper? What exactly do I need? You get it. What do exactly makes others fail and makes others pass? And that you should not only understand it when it comes to, uh, to let's say, the, the time of the exam, but you should also be able to understand at the start of the training, at the start of the course. For example, for my friends that are preparing for this paper, especially when it comes to uh, preparing this paper for the next, uh, for October or for December, sorry. This is a time for you to now see, evaluate yourself and see how dry strategies to utilize the remaining three months, okay? The remaining three months to be able to pass this paper accordingly, because it's very possible. All these things that you can see, as you've, as you've seen in the, learning out, uh, in the learning outcomes, these things came out very easily, okay? They are the common, common things that we, we basically work with, okay? They are the common, common things that we, we basically work with. All these things, okay? You can see the forms of business entity, whatever is here. I've told you that whatever you're seeing here, like the examiner says it, forms of business entity and puts meaning and puts ethics and puts benefits and limitation. 
it doesn't stop him from just getting partnerships and creates a question and says, explain the benefits of partnerships over limited liability company, five marks. And you know that those five marks are already in your pocket, okay? Those five marks are already in your pocket because uh, one of the things that uh, and I usually encourage students is that never, never work for the 50 mark when it comes to ice power exams. Never, never work for 50 mark. Every time you work for a 50 mark, you, you actually, it's suicidal. Because if you focus your mind on working for 50 mark, it is actually highly likely that you actually get either 50, 54 or not, not beyond 60 mark, okay? Because you've worked for the 50 mark. But if you work for a 70, which I want you to do so, work for a 70, know that I'm not preparing for 50 mark. My, mine is not, to, not, not a pass mark. Mine is to have a, a mark on my transcript that best represents me, that can create opportunities for me. I'll tell you myself, myself, I'm an accountant. Those that uh, uh, follow me know very well. And I'm not an accountant who is uh, at entry level. I'm an accountant who is at leadership level, okay? And I want to tell you that even through the recruitment, okay, the, that we make within uh, the organizations and also other organizations, Sometimes you, you find it hard to choose between candidates. You find it hard because you because everyone has done CPA. I've done CPA and over a thousand other people have done CPA. But the challenge we face is you have lots of CVs, you have lots of academic credentials. And the question is, who should actually be recruited? And now they now getting down the small, small things of who has better grades, who has a better class of degree, who has, let's say, maybe a better CPA max, okay? As you can see, many things are actually defining on what opportunities are coming your way. And that is why you see it's important for you to know that if I'm preparing for any exam, okay? It's not just about the exam, but it's about where this document will definitely represent you at one point in time, okay? That is something that you should have in mind going forward, even as you prepare for these exams, that if somebody sees 50 marks, that should only happen if maybe circumstances didn't, and I can actually ex explain to it. But if I have all the capabilities, some of you don't have really good degrees, maybe you didn't get first class degrees or second class upper, or you have second class upper, but maybe went through uh, universities uh, that are not yet that known, okay? Now, the opportunity you have is within the CPA, is to change, have those good marks for somebody to know that, oh, even somebody from care, you can actually get this, can actually uh, pass CPA like this. Then somebody, you know, whatever, whatever qualification you have that is ahead of the other, changes somebody's mindset, okay? Onto, uh, onto what they may consider, okay? of you so that is why you see for everything that you do give it your best okay for everything that you do give it your best if you're part of this cpa class or you uh you you're just trying to test waters and see is this cpa thing really worth my time okay and you still you're still there i, I want to tell you that please it's okay for you to get off the, get off the course and first wait a time when your mind is settled when you're ready because this exam, actually, you people that uh, you, most of you must have gone through A-level, okay? If not all of you. I, I, if, I, if somebody is asking me, tell me about CPA and how I can pass, I'll tell them if you know how you prepared for exams in A-level, it's the same way you should actually prepare for exams in CPA, okay? It's a true, it's a true, a true picture. Of, of how the CPA journey looks like. Yes, I know level one will be uh, a, little, a little easier for you because uh, some of you already have some previous experience. Uh, you either maybe did this at degree level and so on. So dynamics, it will be a little much easier for you. But when it comes to uh, next levels, and even some other papers, but don't undermine a paper like you've seen. It, we had 32% pass rate in the December exams. So what does that mean? That means that any paper can be failed. I've told you even this financial accounting that you may look at it and say, 
is very cheap. I can actually, I might not even practice. Some of you can go for classes, meaning the exam, the, the lecturer says today, that's what we've studied. You just close your book and move and, and wait for the next class. You don't practice. Even when we come for the revision classes, we go through the revision, you see the question, you're excited because we've gotten the answer. We close off and say that one is now off. Yours is to go and create an environment. Get a past paper question. And even when you know there's their solution, by the way, there are solutions on the ISPA website. You can find them there. Okay. But yours is to go get a question. Try it out. If you fail the question, go and maybe just look through and see what may have not happened rightly. You can look through your notes and so on. Now, if it still fails, go look at what? At the solution by ISPAO and see what, how did they exactly attempt this? Or else maybe find a colleague whom you're trying out with the, quest, with, with the question and see how you can share answers and see where you went wrong. I'll tell you that every time you try out a question and you fail it, you're able to identify what you don't know and you, it makes you not to do the same mistake again, okay? You actually, it helps you not do the same mistake again. So it's important for you to understand. But above all, make sure that you going through this syllabus over and over time, even when you're preparing for, uh, for example, for uh, the December exam, make sure that whatever you've, you're studying or whatever you're reading, you're taking off. What of, one of the things that I usually do, every time I come to uh, the last week of the exam, you will find most of my course outlines ticked off. They have a, a lot of, uh, I even print it out, by the way. I don't leave it in soft copy. I print it out and I'm always there trying to check and see, do I know this thing? Never go to an exam, especially a CP exam, when there's one thing on the course outline that you don't, okay, course outline or syllabus that you don't understand. For example, if you don't know what an accounting equation is and it is on the syllabus, then you, you, you actually, you're actually not ready for the paper. Because in the same way I've told you, just like the way you're seeing it right here, if somebody is setting, they'll just get the syllabus and say, okay, accounting equation is on the syllabus. So I say, okay, uh, let me just provide them with these transactions, maybe over 12 transactions. And I'll say, uh, please uh, show the effect of each of the transactions on the accounting equation. And I'll put like 10 marks and I'll leave, leave it right there. Now yours, it is within, it is within you, uh, with, with it, within you either to, to give me the answers or not, okay? And remember one of the things that you should also know, one of the differences with this, with this CPA exam is that the person, you, 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 you don't have, you don't know who is going to mark your exam. You don't know who is, uh, who is setting the exam. So at the end of the day, you cannot spot, you cannot be there and uh, think that everything will really move rightly, okay? So, I just try to read uh, uh, some of your comments here. Um, okay. Uh, Betty says, so helpful. Uh, okay. Very good advice. So helpful. I've got to now to read. Okay. Uh, very good enlightenment. Thank you. So helpful on time management. Seriously, we have to be wise on that. Lillian, thank you. And thanks that you, you mastered that. Someone says that section A require showing workings for the objectives? No, totally no. No one wants your workings, by the way. Remember, it carries a single mark, okay? So you can, you can work your workings from somewhere, but what the examiner is interested in is you circling the right answer, okay? Is circling the right answer. So don't struggle to uh, put headings and do what. That is not uh, something that should really disturb you, okay? So that is something. So Sarah says, very helpful. Philly says, Sam, if you have a generator of about 30 million and I repair it at 12 million, can, can do I capitalize it? Okay, very good question. Now that is, uh, it's, uh, like I talked to about uh, revenue and uh, capital expenditures. Now, when it comes to, uh, to uh, let's say, either to capitalize or to expense, it's not about the amount, by the way. 
it's not about the amount that because the, this generator is 30 million and I've repaired it uh, worth 12 million, which is nearly uh, half of the value. It does not mean that you have to, unless it's only if at all this 12 million increases the capacity of the generator. Maybe you've bought a new component, okay? That increases maybe the voltage that this generator can generate. Or you've bought, let's say maybe an engine, which engine will increase the useful life of this generator or will increase its capacity. That is when you capitalize. But if it's just repair and maintenance, greasing, oiling, and so on, then you expense that, okay? Then you expense that. That's the same thing with the building. Like I've said, even if it's paint, you've used uh, sardoline paint, it's very expensive. They have charged you 10 million. It's paint, it's paint, it's, 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 it's basically an expense, okay? So no matter the amount, your decision on either to expense or capitalize an expenditure is not based on the value, okay? Is not based on the value, but rather based on the scenario, okay? The scenario at hand. So that is uh, very, very important for us to understand. So make sure that uh, going forward, you're preparing for your exams with all this in mind, okay? I will tell you that financial accounting is one of the easiest paper to pass, okay? And once best, best by the way, you pass this paper, immediately you jump on to paper eight, you find your journey very smooth, okay? And that's why you see uh, some people usually ask me, Sam, why do you teach only financial accounting? And why don't you teach? In, because I believe that if somebody has a poor, a, a kind of a poor preparation, like they are not prepared well to understand these concepts from, from the start. Remember financial account, these are the principles that you're going to do every day with at your workplace. So if you can't understand these principles, then you actually, you have, you have challenges ahead of you, okay? So that is why I do this paper and I share a lot of experience, those that have been a part of my exam, my papers, uh, classes, you know very well. So like I indicated, we have two classes. We have the normal classes that run, um, uh, run every Sunday, okay? They run from every Sunday from seven to nine. Okay, they run from seven to nine. And then we have the revision class that basically runs every Tuesday from seven to nine. It's actually, it's not like this, like the way I've, uh, I've actually done this class. Uh, this class, I just did it as a briefing class because I felt that uh, some of you what need to find this information. And you'll agree with me that this information that I've given you is even better than us getting to a question of calculating a, a number of depreciation because you only know the number of depreciation. But this knowledge is very important for you, okay? So for the, for the next classes that we shall be looking at, for the next classes, even for the previous class, like I said, if you're new and you're joining in, I'll give you access to the previous recordings to help you to understand how, uh, how our journey is, okay? I also, um, I just uploaded, uh, I'm struggling with, uh, with uh, I'm trying to, uh, to develop a simple site here where I'll be sharing uh, um, more information about uh, the journey, especially around accounting. Uh, let me just try to see if I can find the link so I can give you, to help you uh, go through some of, uh, I've, actually, I've actually uploaded some, some videos already. It's actually, it's a YouTube channel where I want to use it to, uh, to teach, to tell more people about the CPA course and uh, also about other, um, other, other, other accounting related things. I will just share the link. So you just copy it and, uh, and uh, paste it somewhere. Uh, okay. Uh, you can also ask me to share it maybe on, uh, on, 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 on uh, in case you need it on WhatsApp. I can be able to share it with you. It's basically a YouTube channel. I can actually just show it right here. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes uh, Zoom may disturb me. So I've tried to uh, upload uh, some some questions here that I've I've done before. For example, this was uh, uh, some guidance on financial accounting. It was an introduction bit of it. These are these are these are free. By the way, you can access them. These are free but you know that uh, this is not enough for you to pass the exam. So I just put them here as samples for those that have not been part of the class, my previous classes. This was also one of the classes I did, did also what you need to know about the CP exam. 
you can try to go through them. This was a question on manufacturing account. I did this uh, several time ago. This was a bit one month. And I did a question on bank reconciliation. And then I also did a one question on financial accounting objectives, okay? So you should be able to go through uh, this in case, I know my students already have uh, recordings of some of these. Some of them are, are really old uh, videos that I've done uh, financial accounting, but they are also definitely very relevant and they really help you. So these are some of, so this should give you a sample. I don't upload uh, uh, anything beyond this here, okay? This is just to give you an insight of how our normal revision classes look like, okay? So just try to go through this and see if this is something that really works for you. And uh, in case in case it is, it is, you can also subscribe, by the way. Uh, you can subscribe, there's a subscribe button there. Uh, I usually, uh, I, I want to use this channel, by the way, to share more about the CPA course. Not 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 share notes here, okay? Here, if I'm to share, just share maybe uh, one or two things, just to show you an insight into the classes, okay? But if you want to join the, uh, the classes and get the best out of, uh, uh, of the whole journey, get best out of the strategies, then uh, you should be able to uh, join the other uh, the classes and understand. So when you go through this, it should give you an insight on how your journey looks like, okay? And uh, that will help you, okay? So um, I'll take any questions in case there are any questions and uh, I'll, I'll call it a day. I know I've not gone through a question. Some of you went, came here for, for that reason, but uh, um, I felt at a time like this, when we have about one month, I needed to give you some insights. I share more insights in the classes, okay? Because I cannot really share everything during this time. Every time we get to a topic, I'm able to give you insights on what are the strategies of passing this question and what should you expect, okay? And I want to tell you that many people that have gone through my hands have passed this exam, okay? Many people that have gone through me have passed this exam because I'm very passionate about by the financial accounting. It looks very simple, but it's, it's a subject that I'm really very passionate about. And I'm passionate about seeing my students pass and of course, becoming professional accountants, okay? That is why you see, I endeavor a lot to even bring these free classes here. Somebody will ask me, do we have another free class like this of Chuti? I'll tell you no, because this is what this is what I teach, you get it? If you want the Chuti class, you find it the normal class, we have them. We have other papers as well, okay? That you can find classes for, but uh, uh, for matters of this, class this is what I, I have to offer for you okay so very important so do i have any question you can unmute and ask your question if you have any if you have any question you can unmute and uh, and ask or you can use the chat box i'll just take the next anything about financial accounting you can ask me anything about this class you can ask me and i'll be able to answer Please chat box. Let's use the chat box to answer. In case it's you feel uh, it's a personal question, you can also ask that question on WhatsApp. Okay, I'll be there uh, after the class, so you can share the question right there. In case you want to appreciate, please appreciate. You can uh, share your appreciation messages here. It's good to appreciate by the guys. This thing is for free uh we incur data we incur time to be able to uh, deliver this to you so appreciate like i said the revision classes are for a hundred thousand in case you're joining in for the revision classes alone they are for a hundred thousand okay if you're joining in for the other class then you should be able to pay the two hundred thousand when you join in for the full class you also have access to the revision class by the way, i just did that as an offer okay i just did that that as an offer the 200 is supposed to be for a single class a week but i felt like my students needed need at least to attend the revision classes and i don't have to charge you again okay so that is what i really did so ramadan thanks thanks samuel all you've shared today it was helpful my pleasure okay okay so i'm not seeing any question coming through but in case it comes through, I'll be able to answer, okay? 
So thank you so much for joining through. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, at least uh, I have had uh, Michael here, Carol, Daniel, Samuel, Philly, someone who's using FM, someone who is uh, Haman, Sekandi, Lembe, Oliver, Margaret, Namtevi, I know Margaret usually joining for the other classes. Navagasera, Janet, Sandra, thank you, Christine, Namvuma, uh, Ramadan, uh, Sarah, Susan, Yonata. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining through. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next classes as well, okay? So I would, I would want to uh, wish you all the best in the exam. And by the way, CPA can be passed, okay? Not, let not what I've just shared here make you feel like, uh, ah, this, thing is, this thing is harder like, compared to how I thought. CPA can be passed and we passed those papers. We were on the journey that you're on, okay? But one of the things that I want to tell you that don't never take it this for granted. Never take this journey for granted. Give it your best. And um, the time we used to do these CPA, uh, CPA papers, ours, they would just put a pass or fail on our transcripts. These days, they include the mark. And you know, when they include the mark, the person who will see your transcript will judge you, okay? We want to judge you based on your mark. So for you to le lessen on the, on the judgment that is a bit negative, create some time and put in your effort. This thing, you do it once and it's for all. Create those times, create those late nights, read through, make sure that early in the morning you're waking up, have those phones that you, when you're in the taxi or moving to work, see if you can listen to uh, maybe a class, see how you can find, how you can create different times for you to be able to prepare for exams, okay? And I believe that you'll pass them highly, okay? You'll be able to get the marks that you really deserve, okay? So thank you so much. Um, I, I will really appreciate. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm here to take any, any questions in case they are there. I will really able to take them. In case they are not, uh, we will end the class and we'll meet again, okay? Yonata, your microphone is muted. I don't know if you're speaking, but uh, all is well. So thank you, thank you so much. Wish you all the best, okay?